Hi and thank you so much for joining me today for day three of Christie's Beautiful Life sketches. Um, this is round 10 and today the sketch is from Sandra Lee. So I'm using some photos of a trip my husband and I took to Boston back in 2015. Um, we toured around the surrounding area and on this particular day we did the Newport Cliff Walk um, which turned into quite a saga because we didn't realise just how rough the terrain was in parts and then we got lost <laughs> trying to find our way back to the hotel. But it was still a fun day so I'm just documenting how filthy my shoes were at the end of all this and how tired we were. So you can see at the top of my screen I've got a small printout of this sketch and um, I will be making it my own. I am following loosely how Sandra has this sketch with the three elements above the two photos. I flipped the two photos around because the small photo felt better on the right hand side and here I am just cutting two strips to put behind those photos per the sketch. So I'm using Vicky Bootin's Fernwood. I resisted getting this last year but as we come into autumn this year um, I just couldn't resist any longer. I absolutely love this. We've still got plenty at Hey Little Magpie in the shop and uh, it really is a beautiful range. The colours are phenomenal. So today I've pulled out the blues and greys uh, to match the fact that we were by the ocean. So um, just those two strips, the bottom one I think looks just like a foamy sea. It is in fact uh, clouds and a sky but using a small strip makes it look like that. So just checking the positioning here um, and then I'm going to bring up my sewing machine and I'll stitch along those two strips of paper. I don't actually put that on screen while I'm doing it because um, all you could see was the top of my sewing machine. So before I do that here I've just marked where those strips are going to go and I'm coming in with my Distress Ink in Weathered Wood and I'm just going to create um, a little bit of mixed media underneath those where those two strips are going. So just using a wide brush to get the majority of this down and then I'll go in and do some splatters as well. And because this is just distress and not distress oxide, it, the colours don't bloom like they do in the distress oxides. So I'll come in with my oxides afterwards and mix a couple of the colours together to get that blooming that I love so much. So just moving the ink around there with my packaging and then coming in with some paper towel just to daub up the excess. And then I'll go in with some splatters just to create a bit more depth on that. I was being a little bit impatient here. I probably should have just waited for it to dry. <laughs> I wanted to get on with the layout. It's been um, on my mind, this one, for a little while and how I was going to approach it. So I think once you've got an idea formulated, you just want to get on and do it, don't you? So now, as I say, coming in with my uh, bundled sage and um, speckled egg, just to add some different colours to this mixed media area and then just blobbing those on really and using the packaging technique to get those colours down and mixed in with the others and the end result is absolutely beautiful. So here are those stitched strips and as I say I just went with my sewing machine and did three or four rows of stitching just to add a bit of texture to those and now I'm going to go in with my um, Tim Holtz Distress Edger and distress the edges of all the papers that are going down on this paper, on this layout. So just positioning those two and then I'll get them stuck down with double sided tape just down the middle so that I can lift up the edges a bit and um, keep that texture that I want on this layout. So just roughing up the sides with my fingernail. The rest of it I did with the edge distresser but because of the threads at the ends I didn't really want to damage those so I'm just using my fingernail. Now using my tea ruler to check that everything's straight and then adhering that down. And I toy with the idea of offsetting them against one another but I decide that they're better just um, directly on top of one another like that. So like I say, just pulling up the edges because the adhesive's just in the middle, it's easy to do that. And then working out exactly where I want my photos to go. And I have a bit of a play with these mats but I get there in the end. So as I say, you can see on the sketch above, she's got three equal size mats, but I didn't want to do that. Um, it's not something that I would normal do, normally do, and I definitely wanted to make this layout my own. So this tag is actually from uh, the cut apart sheet from the 12 by 12 papers, and I've cut the bottom off, which is those um, trainers that you can see top left hand corner of the screen, which I will use as an embellishment shortly on the layout. 
So just checking exactly how I want this to go. Like I say, it takes a little bit of faffing, but um, I'm happy with it in the end once, <laughs> once I've sorted it. And this title piece that I'm coming in with now is from that same cut apart sheet that had the tags on and it just says don't forget to enjoy the view because um, towards the end we were getting so fed up trudging around that um, you do sometimes forget not to stop and take a breath and see where you are because it really is such a beautiful area Newport. So just gluing all that down now using my wet glue because I'm happy with the positioning so I don't really want to have to move things too much and forget where they were. So just going around one piece at a time and gluing them down. And now those mats are down, I'm going to focus on getting the photos down. So I'll pop them up on foam dots per usual using the 25mm square foam pads from Styx 2 They're on a roll and they're absolutely brilliant. You'll see me if you've watched my previous videos using them almost every time. <laughs> I uh, do like repetition for sure. So while I'm doing this, um, I just want to remind you to check the description box down below to see everybody else who's joining in on this hop. There's a playlist so you can just play that and um, you'll have hundreds of hours of watching um, some amazing, amazing inspiration from my fellow YouTubers who are joining in. So just getting this second photo stuck down now and you can see I've brought in that little um, bottom of the tag of the trainers and that will go uh, below the bottom strip on the left hand side there once I've done this. So just deciding exactly where I want and as you can see it was a last minute decision to offset the photo slightly to the right hand side of the layout so that I could um, add a bit of embellishing to the left hand side where those trainers are and that don't forget to enjoy the view will be my title for this layout. It's really just documenting, as I said before. Um, not everything is as it seems in the photos. <laughs> and although we did have a lovely day, it really was hard work doing all that walking. So just roughing up the edges. I was too lazy to reach for the edge distressor, which is right there, but I couldn't see it. It was in front of my eyes. Couldn't see it on my desk at the time. So just using my scissors to scuff up the edges there. And then that will sit down underneath that. And I was quite proud of myself because these aren't the sort of things that I would normally use on a layout. But as my trainers are on there, I felt that um, I could. <laughs> I'm trying to get better at using um, embellishments that aren't necessarily a part of the photos on a layout. Because they do all add to how the layout looks. So just getting the positioning right there. And then I'm going to go in with some of these beautiful ferns that I cut from one of the 12 by 12 papers. I just sat one evening and fussy cut some of them. Um, there, it's a great way to extend your embellishments if you um, find some elements on a paper that you can fussy cut. And I like this magnifying glass that says captured, but uh, I just couldn't get it to fit. It was going, it was overlapping the title, so that didn't make it this time. But I wanted to fill in that little gap at the beginning of the title piece. So I found this chipboard that just said today, and it brings that pink in nicely, which is a, a nice balance against all the blues that we've got here. So just checking I'm happy with the positioning and then that those trainers will go down. Sometimes when I've got an element like this I'll just leave it sitting for a while just to check that I am happy with the final placement that I've chosen before I finally glue it down. But I can see the shape of the layout coming together now and I'm happy with that. So I've gone a little bit off from the sketch. My title isn't below my larger photo but it just fitted better where I've put it and I'm happy with that. So I'm going down the left hand side now and as I say doing some embellishment and I decided to do that with word stickers. So I'm starting with this chipboard piece that says lost and found because we very much were. Um, and then adding some more of these ferns. I'm going to add two at the top left here and then to balance out two on the bottom right underneath that today chipboard piece.
And this is where I start going through the ephemera pieces and just positioning bits to see if I'd like them on the layout. Um, I've got a couple of different packs, one of the icons and one of the ephemera. So going through everything and like I say, positioning them on. But in the end, I don't think I actually use anything. <laughs> but it, Oh, I do use one of these tickets, but it was fun to go through and see exactly what's there. And I know I'm going to get an awful lot of use out of this um, collection, so I'm not too worried that I didn't use them this time. So I did use this, as I say, this ticket and then that round piece um, next above the trainers that says small details. So the ticket, I'm just cutting in half to get the most out of it, using half there and then half at the top above the, my photo of my trainers there. Just checking exactly where I want it to go and then gluing them both down. Adding a bit of twine to that um, tag hole just to finish it off and I'll take that up and over the top of the page and glue it behind the top of the page there. And now go into the sticker book to see what I can find in this. And this is where I find some more word phrases that I quite enjoy putting on my layouts at the moment. So this one says, not the whole story, because as I say, sometimes you see a photo, but you don't realize just what went on behind it <laughs> or the day. So I quite like that there. And then next, I think it's um, the washy phrases that I find here, yeah. And there's one that says discover in a darker green so that goes on the page below that previous sticker. And I quite enjoyed, as I say, doing these little strips of words, if you can find phrases that suit. And there are normally plenty in Vicky Booting's ranges. So while I have a break, I'm just going to go in with my journaling and it's going directly underneath that large photo of me. And it just says, these muddy shoes tell a story. We did the Newport Cliff Walk. The weather wasn't great. The terrain rocky and we lost our way. We must have walked 15 miles. <laughs> we did find a lovely cafe at the end of it though and had some hot soup, which was very nice. So just going in with the mini puffies now. And there's a tiny green heart that I put there on the right hand side. And then a little camera underneath the small details and then into the 12 by 12 sticker sheet just to see if there's anything on here. And then I see this phrase thing that says, taking the unexpected path. And then this is, it just says this. So that get, that's that gone on my picture of my trainers. And then finally documented to fill in that gap nicely there. So now just going back to the sticker book because I want a label to add my date to and this gold one looks really nice. It works perfectly with the colours because we've got a lot of beiges and things there. So just cutting it in half so that I can save the other half for another day and then going in with my roller date stamp. And I'm just putting it underneath the journaling as well, just to bring the eye down the page a little bit, because it looked a little bit blocky. So I thought that would just add a bit more texture. I love this circle that says this moment. So I'm going to nestle that above the um, fern, using some foam tape to lift it up a little bit. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining me, and I shall see you very soon for my next video. Thanks so much. Bye.